Hey everyone, most of the video you're about to watch was written and recorded pre-patch 1.0.3. At the end of the demonstrations, I will be showing off a few improvements in the builds I used utilizing the buffed version of the ring. By the time I get this video out, the patch might have already been released. Hey everyone, welcome back to Remnant from Hell. Today we'll be discussing Burden of the Lucid Dreamer, how it works, what it allows us to do, when you should use it, and some unique interactions. It is quite the interesting ring, although it might seem like a confusing pick to some because of its effect. My goal with this video is to prove that the ring does have a purpose. To start things off, how does this ring work? The tooltip states, exchanges crit chance and crit damage buffs into an equivalent average damage buff. What exactly does this mean? For starters, it sets your crit chance and crit damage to 0%. While you are wearing this ring, you will not be able to roll for a crit by normal means. It then takes both values and multiplies them together. For example, if you have a 5% base crit chance weapon and the default crit damage of 50%, the damage gained by the ring would be 0.05 times 0.5 or a 2.5% damage boost to that weapon's shots. Obviously, these are dealing with the absolute lowest values obtainable on our players. Let's see how it looks with maxed out traits and consumables. So when we have Executioner, Kingslayer, Ice Fruit, and Jerky, we reach our max values without other gear boosting it. We are calculating crit chance with the weapon's base percent in mind, as Lucid Dreamer does account for it. So on a 5% base crit chance weapon, the damage calculation comes out to 0.35 times 0.9, or a 31.5% damage boost to that weapon's attacks. This is pretty much the lowest gain you will be getting from the ring realistically. If for whatever reason you aren't maxed out in either trait and don't have those consumables, I wouldn't recommend using this ring. You might be asking how mods are affected by the ring. Well this is where things get a little interesting. Mods do not pull from your weapon's crit chance, rather they have their own internal critical hit chance and damage values that stack with the players. For example, Skira on the Devastator has a hidden 20% increased crit chance. We can see this by taking the damage numbers with it on and dividing it by the base damage. Zero point four five times zero point seven five equals thirty three point seventy five percent. Three hundred and seventy five times one point four eight seven five equals five hundred fifty seven point eight, which then rounds up to five hundred and fifty eight. Now I don't know every single modifier and value there is, just know that as a baseline they will be drawing from your crit chance and damage at the very least. Let's wrap this up by covering what isn't affected by the ring or has some weirdness with it. Summons are sadly not affected by the ring although this is actually a good thing that I'll cover later. Hunter's Mark does not increase your damage dealt to marked enemies. Polished Whetstone and Heartseeker need to be equipped before Lucid Dreamer to work properly. So what does this allow us to do? Well, the purpose of the ring is to gain consistency and higher average damages from critical hit boosts. 35% of the time, you'll be dealing 90% more damage, so you get the average of the two all the time. This allows you to hit certain damage thresholds against mobs and adds. You can more consistently one-shot certain enemies without hitting their weak spots. Instead of boss fights, your DPS with relatively low crit chance weapons will be better and consistent. This power and consistency comes at the cost of not being able to hit these same values as critical hits. Most of the time. There are exceptions to this rule, but we'll get into that later. Before you equip Lucid Dreamer, you have to accept one thing. Critical hits will, almost, always be more powerful than running the ring. It all depends on how much crit you have in your build. The ring only becomes more powerful than critical hits when you're able to reach over 100% crit chance. There are a few cases where that is possible, which I will cover later in the unique interaction section. As far as when you should run the ring, it is up to personal preference. Do you wish you were getting more consistency with your crit damage? This ring solves that. Do you wish to hit specific damage thresholds consistently? This ring could help you with it. Do you want to see all the hidden crit chance and damage values on mods? Then this ring is absolutely worth a try. Let's talk about the application of the ring and some unique interactions. First, there is the armor set that would normally seem useless with the Elusive Dreamer, the Radiant set. The 30% crit chance and damage would be a good boost for the ring. But how can we gain stacks of our crit chance to zero? Well, there are actually three ways we can still crit. One is using Hunter's Mark. This allows all of our attacks to roll a crit, minus the damage boost you would normally get with it. Interestingly enough, this is pretty effective with dots, as their ability to crit counts towards our stacks. Burning and bleeding can provide a steady stream of stacks as long as the mod is up. The second way is via summons. More specifically, turrets. Iron Sentinel is a great way of getting stacks fast. 
and you can use slower firing weapons like the sniper rifle as you would in a normal turret crit setup. The third and final way is with Shattered Vertebrae. Since every other shot forces a crit, it allows automatic weapons to quickly rack up stacks. A quick note about Shattered Vertebrae and Lucid Dreamer. The 15% bonus crit damage you would gain on forced crit acts just like a 15% damage boost. This in combination with the armor converts it into a makeshift Osseus build. It can be fun, but only getting the bonus damage on a forced crit is a hit to your overall DPS. Not to mention, using dots isn't recommended with Shattered, due to them being able to consume your forced crit. This may change with feature patches, but the Particle Accelerator has some interesting properties with the ring. Gravity Core has a multiplier to your critical hit chance and damage values. Specifically, it doubles both of them. If you have a 50% chance to crit, you will always crit with Gravity Core. If you remember what I mentioned earlier, getting over 100% crit chance makes the ring stronger than crits. Let's say you manage to hit 80% crit chance and 150 crit damage. Those values are then doubled to 160% and 300%. This equates to 480% more damage. Multiplying the 1500 damage from Gravity Core by a combination of the Ring, Labyrinth Set, and Evocation, we get 8287.5 damage. That's not even taking Corrosion into account. Needless to say, it's pretty overpowered. Which is why I prefaced this bit with a warning that it might change in the future. It goes without saying, this absolutely annihilates Ripide. On Hell difficulty, this setup destroys him in about 4 Gravity Cores. Moving on, we have Devouring Loop, which is still able to proc even without forced crits. If your shot would have crit without Lucid Dreamer, it rolls the 5% chance. This works really well with Shattered Vertebrae's guaranteed crits. Granted, the damage isn't as good as real dev loop crits. Last up, we have Heartseeker. The first hit against an unaware enemy grants an effective 120% damage boost. This is from the 100% guaranteed crit chance and the 20% bonus crit damage. Of course, once the enemy becomes aware of your presence, this drops down to just the 20% crit damage boost. But if you wanted to run a stealth setup for mobbing, this combination is pretty good. Now that we've discussed the ring and its capabilities, let's see some demonstrations and comparisons with and without normal crits. Gorfist with the Hardy modifier will be our test subject. For the sake of time, I'll show some quick comparisons in DPS or single shot damage. First up is the Radiant set. This is the setup we'll be using, swapping out Lucid Dreamer for Heartseeker, and Shattered Vertebrae for Gunslinger's Charm in the second clip. As you can see, the DPS without the ring is much higher every 4 out of 5 shots. Technically, the ring is working to prevent that 1 in 5 chance that our bullet deals significantly less damage. However, the crit damage without it is much higher and not too unlikely to occur. Since we are hitting 145 crits 80% of the time, Lucid Dreamer doesn't really do much to help this setup. So what's the verdict? If you're going to use the Radiant set, you should probably slot something else in your second ring slot. Next up, we'll be comparing the Osseus set with and without the ring. Same as before, we are swapping Lucid Dreamer out for Heartseeker. As you can see, we are able to drop his health bar in a similar time period. Like we discussed earlier, the setups that don't have as much stacked crit chance get a better deal for their DPS. On a best case shot here with Dragon's Breath, we could get around 7.7k damage, although the odds of all 14 damaging hits critting is astronomically low. The worst case being around 3.3k damage. With the ring though, we hit a constant 4.8k damage with every shot. 
This right here is a far better use case for the ring. If we were to keep score, this would put the ring at a 1-1. One one. Next up is a Labyrinth mod build. We will be using Breath of the Desert for this test. With crits we end up with a worst roll of 2k damage and a highest roll of 4.7k damage. With Lucid Dreamer we hit a constant 2.6k damage per volley. This is not nearly as big of an impact as with the Ossia set. Rolling at least 2 crits makes the ring setup less powerful. Considering you are rolling 7 times with a 45% crit chance, you are more than likely going to get 2 or more pallets to crit. Because of this I'm going to have to give a point to crits. Last up for today we have the Slayer set. We are going to be testing the Spore Bloom's basic shots. With crits, our worst roll was 1.3k damage and our best was 3.2k. With Lucid Dreamer, we were able to hit 1.8k with each shot. This is another point where although you are getting a 35% damage boost from the ring, the crits are just way too good to pass up. With Gamblers, you have a 50% chance to roll for that 3k damage. In this specific setup, crits are just more worth it. Sadly, that is one more point for crits. This is the part of the video where I'll talk about the updated version of Lucid Dreamer. The change that Lucid Dreamer has received is a 30% increased crit chance buff. This change functions similarly to a 20-25% damage buff to many setups compared to the original. Also added to the ring, albeit hidden, is a cap to crit chance and crit damage. This is to prevent Gravity Core from being as overpowered as it was. The crit buff now helps setups to reach the crit cap easier, while not devaluing the importance of stacking up the crit trinkets. Overall, the ring feels much nicer now and is more worthy of equipping every now and again. There are also some changes made to the ring in survival mode which improved its damage buff gained in comparison to the general survival mode damage scaling. I hope I was able to encourage some of you to give the ring a try. It is a fun and thought provoking trinket, and worth a shot at least once. If you have any suggestions for the hell mod, I will leave Bolt's discord linked in the description. The next video I have planned is the secret fun non-educational video. I'm gonna try to get it done in about a week, but it might take two. At the same time, the next hell mod update is on the horizon. In the case I'm not able to get out this next video before the patch comes out, expect the short video covering the changes in the update. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.